This fact presents an approach to solving simple electrical circuits by hand calculation. We're using a DC example here to show the method. The first thing to note is that Maxwell's method is a variety of mesh analysis which works well for the sort of simple planar networks we are likely to want to solve by hand calculation. It's a simple, systematic and quick way of allocating circuit variables and keeping signs in order, the things that can otherwise often go wrong. However, it only works for planar networks, ones which can be flattened out onto a surface without any crossovers. And also, more complex electronic circuits tend to have parallel structures where nodal analysis, as used by simulators such as Multisim, becomes much more efficient. This slide gives a quick reminder of some of the terms used in circuit analysis. A node is a junction between branches of the circuits characterized by its unique voltage. Note that the ground here is one node which runs across the whole of the bottom of the circuit at zero volts earth potential. A branch contains an impedance and possibly an active current or voltage source and it's characterized by the current flowing through it. Now for the purpose of adding up equations, we needn't consider the node between an ideal source and an impedance, which would split a branch like B1, say, into two pieces. And that's because if the voltage source was in a branch of its own, we couldn't find the current through it, as that's determined by the rest of the circuit. But practical voltage and current sources are fine, however, and we needn't worry about this nicety in our Maxwell solution. Now the general circuit analysis problem is to find out the circuit voltages and currents for every branch of the network, assuming we know the values of the components and the sources. And so if there are B branches in the network, we therefore need to find two B unknowns. Well, Ohm's law applied to each of the B branches will give us B equations. Kirchhoff's nodal law applied to the N nodes will actually give us N minus one equations as we don't have to bother applying it to the ground node because it simply mirrors the sum effect of all the others. And therefore the mesh law must apply the missing 2B minus B minus N minus one or B minus N plus one equations that we need to solve the circuit. The problem is that there are more than B minus N plus one possible loops in the circuit and so we need some consistent way of picking the B minus N plus one of them which are independent and therefore sufficient to solve the problem. Here is the sample problem. It includes two voltage sources, three nodes and five branches B1, B2, B3, B4 and controversially B5. So if we're being picky, we can say that we need to find 2B equals 10 variables, voltages and currents, from the B minus N plus 1, or 5 minus 3 plus 1 equals 3, independent mesh equations, two nodal equations, and five Ohm's law relations. But this is just the sort of detail that Maxwell takes care of. On to the method at last, which is actually quite straightforward. Step 1. Simply flatten out the network like this, as shown in the slide, and draw a clockwise reference current in each window of the network. And that's it. We've now found three independent loops which we can solve by mesh analysis to find the circuit currents. And notice that the method has automatically applied the nodal law to reduce the number of unknown currents from five to three. Step two, the analysis. We need to apply the mesh law to each window in turn, remembering the convention that positive current flows out of the positive terminal of a voltage source and into the positive terminal of an impedance, and using our circulating current as the reference direction for each loop we come to. This is the result of the mesh law applied to loop 1. The sum of the voltage sources equals the sum of the voltage drops gives us plus 10 volts for the source as the current is emerging from its positive terminal. There is then an IR drop of I1 amps times 10 ohms across the 10 ohm resistor. However, using our circulating current as a reference, notice that the current flowing down through the 2 ohm resistor in the reference direction is I1 minus I2 amps, and so we have a drop of 2 ohms times I1 minus I2 for this resistor. On to the second loop to do the same thing. This time, the reference direction is that of the circulating current I2. 
There is no source in this loop, and so the left-hand side of the equation is zero. The volt drops across the 10 ohms, 4 ohms and 2 ohm resistors are all on the right-hand side. Now, as neighbouring currents will always circulate in opposite directions to the reference, they will always appear as a negative in the equations, whereas the local reference is always positive. So, for example, the current in the 2 ohm resistor in our reference direction is now I2 minus I1. Finally, on to the third loop. This time, the source has our reference current going into the positive terminal and therefore appears as minus 2 volts. The current through the 4 ohm resistor is now I3 minus I2. These, then, are the three simultaneous equations we need to solve. And as required, we have three independent equations in three unknowns. Gathering the terms together gives this final picture. Well, if you enjoy solving simultaneous equations, um, we can have some fun with that. But um, I prefer, perhaps, some help with a smart calculator, say, or a PC-based package, such as MathCAD. So let's go on to have a look at that. We first need to fit the equations into matrix form. By the rather strange at first rules of matrix multiplication, remember here that I1 multiplies the first column, I2 the second column, and I3 the third column, giving the first row of the equation above as 10 is equal to 12 times I1 minus 2 times I2 plus 0 times I3, which was the original equation. You may like to compare the matrix with the three separate equations of the previous slide to check that you're comfortable with the matrix notation. But the benefit of packaging up the equations like this is that we can now solve them all in one go, or better still, get MathCAD to solve them. The shorthand matrix form is V equals R times I, where V is the left-hand side 3 by 1 vector of voltages, R is now a 3 by 3 array of resistances, and I is a 3 by 1 vector of currents. And following the rules for matrix solution, we find that the unknown currents are now given as I equals R to the minus 1 times V. We can use the matrix button on the toolbar or the keyboard shortcut control M to invoke a matrix with placeholders to enter our values. Hence, the keyboard sequence for entering the voltage vector above is V, colon, control M, and then select three rows in one column and type the values 10, 0, and minus 2 into the placeholders. We can do the same to enter our matrix of resistances. The MathCAD solution, then, is given by I equals R to the minus 1 times V, where I to the minus 1 is a matrix inverse, uh, which MathCAD performs to give the solutions shown on the slide. I1, a circulating current of 843 milliamps, I2, 56 milliamps, and I3, a current of minus 197 milliamps, or alternatively, a current of plus 197 milliamps flowing in an anticlockwise direction. Now we have solved for the circulating currents, we can find any other voltage or current in the circuit using Ohm's law. For example, the current in the 4 ohm resistor is simply the combination of I2 and I3 of 56 milliamps and 197 milliamps, making a, a sum total of 253 milliamps flowing down through the 4 ohm resistor. And equally, the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor can be found as the result of this combined current passing through the 4 ohms of 253 milliamps times 4, or 10.13 volts. This final slide shows the circuit simulation in Multisim, fortunately confirming these results exactly. And note the particular advantages of this approach. Providing we have a planar circuit, we can quickly find the correct number of independent loop equations. It's easy to check the signs, particularly in matrix form. Note that all the diagonals of the resistance matrix are positive and the off-diagonal terms are negative. And also, if you have a matrix savvy calculator or a computer package, the solution follows directly from the mesh equations. But if you like other methods, like superposition, that's fine. If it works, don't fix it. But Maxwell's method is an easy-to-apply, consistent approach to the analysis by hand of simple circuit problems that can save you some time over other approaches.